that my salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. In our first reading through Isaiah the prophet, God made a promise to his people Israel. The promise of God fittingly applied to Jesus as the one who will bring salvation to all. This promise is at the core of our baptismal identity. Like Jesus, to witness to all we encounter of the saving presence of God. And God speaks of Jesus in this way and of us. You are my servant. You are my servant for whom I will show my glory. To be light, reflecting God in the way of Jesus, this is our mission. And there's so much darkness in our world, and sometimes in ourselves, and so it is always been. To have the world filled with light, meaning goodness and peace and justice and unity, it sounds like a fairy tale. But it's not optimism. No, it's rooted in the promise of God, and so can be trusted. If only it comes at the end of time. But in the interim, we know what our mission is to be. To live in such a way as to reflect this Christ. Things are not, need not be as they are now. Receive the light of Christ, so in our baptism. We are gifted with a lighted candle and challenged at the same time to live consecrated to God in the way of Christ. Jesus so lived in the light that John the Baptist said that he was the one who brought life to all people who will ever be born. The true light who comes into the world and gives light and life to all who exist. Salvation, healing, fullness, this is a gift that's offered to us, given to us, but not just for us. We are to be the conduit through whom the light and life of Jesus reaches all those whom we encounter, so that others too may come to know and follow this Jesus. It's mid-January with its cold and darkness and today slippery, treacherous snow and ice. And January lures us to hibernation, you know, wrapping ourselves in the FKM and curl up on a sofa reading a good murder mystery. <laughs> but January is a really tough time for many who in their poverty struggle to stay warm. And for many others who deal with melancholy and depression. And along comes Isaiah and John the Baptist and Jesus and our great Pope Francis, the joyous one. They're not naive. They understand the difficulties of living in a world that is always broken. But all of us say to us, get with it. Remember, in a very real and sometimes difficult world, you are called to mission because you have received the great gift of God faith in the Lord Jesus. The Spirit descended upon Jesus at his baptism, strengthening and enlightening him. And from that moment on, he knew what he was about, to proclaim the presence of God in the unfolding of all life. And we too, whether we're basking in joy, or whether we're trying to, we're rather struggling with the pain of life, we are to testify by our response, more than by our words, that the human family is not alone. In the midst of it all, whether bidden or not bidden, God is present. And with this, we are nudged out of our Afghans, our complacency, and our melancholy. You know, testimony without action is hypocrisy. It's a countersign. Yet if we do not openly testify in ways appropriate, that Jesus is Lord, then we hide the light under a basket. Say what you like about Mike Ditka, but without any apology, one time he said, I believe in God, and I believe in Jesus Christ, and I believe in myself. And 
and one word said, in what order? <laughs> Many of you probably remember Jim Finks. He was the general manager of the Chicago Bears who put that winning team together in 1985. And he was a daily communicant and a very fervent Catholic. He lived his faith. And somehow one time I was invited to a dinner, and so was he, and we sat across from one another. And he noticed the Roman collar, and he said to me, So, Father, where does Jesus Christ fit in? And that's a question that each one of us has to ask with all the particularities of our lives. Where does Jesus Christ fit in? You know, we witness to one another when we gather thankfully week after week in worship. We know what's come. We're not perfect. We come wrestling with the ambiguities of life, the ups and downs. But by our gathering, we profess that we choose to interpret life as meaning and demands based on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And together around the altar, we celebrate the Lamb of God, the incarnate presence of God and humanity of the Lord. We cannot believe it, affirm it, or embrace this too frequently or strongly, because as Christians, without Jesus Christ, we have no faith to declare, no Lord to follow, and no mission to pursue. He is central in the life of the Christian, or should be. We witness to the wider community about this Jesus when we dig deeply and give generously, especially to support the needy. We share our resources with our food pantry, Catholic relief services, Catholic charities, the largest charitable organization in the United States, the Catholic Charities of Chicago. Doctors Without Borders, Mary No, whatever we choose to embrace in ways that we can. So, so do we testify beyond feeling about who this Jesus is to us. Look there, John the Baptist excitedly proclaimed, look, there is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, who comes to forgive and to heal and to unite, to point the way. Good news indeed on this wintry, lustry 